Hello, I'm Andrew uh, from Mod House Gaming, and you're watching another tutorial for Blood Bowl. Uh, today we're going to be covering inducements, um, and we're going to ask the question, what is inducements, and how do they work? Um, we're going to go through each one, make sure you guys know how it does, how all petty cash works, uh, how star players work, and even some uh, player cards, which um, Games Workshop does sell for each team. Um, yeah, we're going to just get to it. So, um, inducements, what are they? They are basically little power-ups that you can buy before the game starts. Um, each player gets to gets a chance to calculate their petty cash um, and add their treasury to their cash pool and buy inducements. So, when I talk petty cash, what is petty cash? Well, um, petty cash is basically the other team saw that you sucked and the, every all their sponsors like, man, this is going to be a bad game because that guy's team is lower than that guy's team. So let's give them some money and let them buy some stuff and maybe it'll be an interesting match because of that. Um, it's just to make the game more fair. It's just um, the Blood Bowl balancing system basically is an inducement, which is hilarious. Uh, because it, actually inducements can really change the game a lot. Um, so yeah, so let's say um, your team value, your current team value, you calculate that. Current team value minus the other team's current team value. That is your petty cash, okay? That I want to make that very clear. Current team value versus other team's current team value. It could be equal. You guys could have no petty cash. Some people only get like 5K in petty cash. Um, I also want to make it very clear. If you don't use the petty cash in the inducement phase, you don't keep the petty cash, okay? You need to spend it um, for the inducements. If you don't have enough for an inducements, Sucks to suck. You guys are too close and too even. Um, <laughs> this is how it happens. Um, but yeah, so again, petty cash. You can't keep it in your treasury. It doesn't add to your treasury. It only adds to the cash pool that you can use to spend on inducements. Yes, you can use cash from your treasury on inducements, but if you have the petty cash, use the petty cash first. All right? Um, so yeah, that's how petty cash is calculated. Current team value minus current team value, okay? Your current team value minus theirs. Um, again, if you're higher to current team value, you obviously don't get any petty cash. You are the higher team. Don't worry about it. All right. Um, next up, common inducements. We're going to go over each of the common inducements, and then we're going to go over some that I think are very important for certain teams, and that will come up very uh, often in uh, Blood Bowl. And you'll see you'll see a lot of them. Um, so let's just go over the list here. Um, first, there's temperature temporary agency cheerleaders and temporary uh, part-time assistant coaches. So if you remember me talking about um, when we were doing team rosters, how um, cheerleaders and assistant coaches can help you on the uh, kickoff table, if you didn't spend it uh, during the, the building phase, you can buy some here right now. And um, Or if you didn't buy them in between matches, here's a last second chance like, oh, hey, maybe I want some cheerleaders or maybe I want some assistant coaches to help me out on my kickoff table because it can be really important sometimes. Um, so you can buy them here. It's 20K. Um, you can't really see it. I'm sorry, it's blurry. I don't have the best cameras, but it's 20K for this. Uh, next up, we have a weather mage. It's 30 gold pieces. So a weather mage, what it does is on any turn, okay, whether it be your turn or the opposition player's turn, you can go to the weather table and pick a weather to change it to. So let me make sure, let me go through it here. You may use a weather mage once per game at the start of any of your team turns before activating any of your players roll on the weather table. So you have to do it at the start of a turn. Then you roll on the weather table and apply a modifier of plus one or plus two to your roll or minus one, minus two to your roll. So that way you can basically pick and choose which weather condition you want. Um, the resulting weather conditions are applied immediately and will last until the end of the opponent's next turn. Okay? At the end of the opponent's next turn of, uh, or the end of the drive. Then replace the weather conditions will return. So, if you, at the start of your turn, you want to change the weather to, uh, let's say it's about to be the end of, it's, it's, um, they, they need to make your opponent needs to make a big pass right they have a catcher in the end zone and they make a big pass but you remember that the weather table on uh, what was it <laughs> um uh, very sunny makes a minus one modifier to passing 
So you want to really get that. You could use a wetter mage to make it very sunny for that one turn, and it really makes uh, their job harder. Um, so you can really use the wetter mage to your advantage. Um, it's kind of undervalued because it's only worth 30 gold pieces. But I think it can be very beneficial if someone needs to make like a couple rushes. You can make a blizzard. Um, it's not guaranteed for sure because you have to roll again on a what was it a two up? No, you, you get to you get to roll the two d six and then you apply modifiers and hopefully you get it. Um, so let's say I roll a four, uh, but I really wanted very sunny. I can do a minus one now it's a three it's very sunny or if i really wanted sweltering heat for some reason at the end of a drive i can do minus two and now it's two um or if i just wanted perfect conditions i give a plus one now it's five and we're all good you know it just depends if the weather is in your favor or not in your favor you can really control it with the weather mage um, really undervalued 30k uh 30 gold thirty thousand gold pieces pretty good uh, next up is a blood riser keg you can actually get two of these um which not many people know about. Basically, each time you get a Blood Roger K, you get a plus one to KO uh, get backs. So if you don't know what a KO is, don't worry, we'll get to the, the punching and brawling and injuring stuff. Um, but when a player is KO'd, you have to roll a four up to get them back into the game after every drive and half, okay? You get a chance to get those KO players back. Uh, again, you have to get a four or higher on one D6. For each of those players. If you get a Blood Riser Keg, you get a plus one modifier to that rule. That means it becomes a three up. And if you get two of them, it becomes a two up. That is really good if you know that your players are gonna get KO'd nonstop. Get some Blood Riser Kegs. They will help you so much. Uh, so 50k gold pieces. Really good. Highly recommend that one. Um, and that's something you'll see a lot actually. The Blood Riser Keg is very, very common. Um, just because it is really good with the KOs. Um, so you'll see that a lot. Next up is the uh, special plays. So this is where the uh, team cards come in. I personally don't like team cards and don't use team cards, but that could be different for you. You might like that you can do special things with these cards. Um, these special play cards cost 100 gold pieces, and I'll explain how they work um, right now. So special play cards, basically um, each special play inducement purchase gives you one special play card to use during the game ahead. Cards are drawn from one or more of the special play card decks during the inducement steps of the pre-game sequence. So for example, um, you'll have uh, random events, dirty tricks, magic memorabilia, heroic feats, benefits of training, and malicious mayhem. That is like the certain decks that you can draw from. Um, basically you roll a d6 and you see the uh, deck uh, that you get, um, and for each separate special plays inducement purchase, roll again on the table. So you can get multiple of these, and you basically there's special plays that you can do. Like, oh, I'm gonna make a pass. Well, I want to make sure I make that pass. Um, let's get a plus one um, because I have the special play card, right? Um, so that's what inducement that inducement does. It basically buffs your guys or it does something special during the game. But the problem is, it's random, it's out of six decks, you really don't know what you're gonna get, but it could be very beneficial. Um, so yeah. There you go, so that is the um, special play cards. You can get, again, up to five of those, so that's gonna be really good uh, sometimes. Uh, I say it's 100,000 gold pieces, so you might see that sometimes, but um, of course these other 100,000 gold piece ones will come up more often. Uh, for example, now we have zero to eight extra team training. So this is the extra team re-rolls that you can get for this game in particular. You don't add it to your max re-rolls, but now you have, when you're doing your little um, dugout thing, um, you'll have that extra team re-roll to help out. Um, so yeah, there you go. That That's extra team re-rolls, easy enough. Extra team training. Uh, bribes, zero to three, 100,000 gold pieces for a bribe. But also, it's 50 gold pieces for teams with the bribery and corruption special rule. So goblins get that rule. Um, you can check those rules basically on the um, on your teams. Um, let's say, for example, black orcs have that bribery and corruption in their uh, little extra special rules. So you can look at the special rules at the very bottom. It will say bribery and corruption on black orcs. So black orcs can use bribes really well. They only have to spend 50k for it. That's pretty good. Um, I'll read it right here for you. 
When a player is caught misbehaving, a bag of gold pieces can have a surprisingly calming effect upon an angered referee. A single bribe may be used when a player is sent off for committing a foul or is used as a secret weapon. To use a bribe, roll a d6. On a roll of a 2 to 6, the bribe is effective and the player is not sent off, and no turnover is caused. But on a 1, the bribery was wasted and the referee decisions will stand. Each bribe is only used once per game. And you can have up to three of these bribes. Um, so a black orc team that has goblins that can like really surround a player and foul them really well, and we'll get into fouling a different video, um, can be really useful. Because then you can bribe the, uh, the person, the referee that's sending you off the field, and say, hey, I didn't do anything. You was on the ground. I punched him free. The ref's like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, no, you kicked him. So on a two up, you're fine. On a one, you're bad. Um, and it's vice versa if you don't have a bribe. So <laughs> try not to roll doubles when you're fouling and you won't have to use bribe. But if you feel like you roll doubles a lot, get a bribe. It will help you out when you're fouling. Um, and it can really be beneficial when you're just like want to get some players out. Um, next up is going to be Wandering Apothecaries. This is $100,000. Not available for teams that can't have Apothecaries. So that means undead, Shambling Undead. That means um, Necromantic Team. Um, the Nurgle Team, I believe, can't have those. They have their own special, like, doctor um, thing. So Apothecaries, Wandering Apothecary is, again, double the cost, just like um, the extra team rerolls. Um, it's double the cost, so you get $100,000 for an Apothecary. You're going up against Ogres. You're going up against Chaos, Lizardmen. Someone that punches hard. You want to get an Apothecary. It's going to help your team stay alive if you have that much inducement money. <laughs> All right, so that's Apothecary. That's, again, 100 k uh, Next up, we got um, a Mortuary Assistant. This is for the Civilian Spotlight. So, again, that is the Necromatic Team, the Shambling Undead. Uh, the Mortuary Assistant uh, for 100k um, is basically the same thing as a Wandering Apothecary. You get to re-roll the casualty to roll before it's rolled. Again, re-roll before it's rolled, okay? That's really weird to say, but you roll two, two uh, casualty... Roll two casualty um, choices, and you choose between them, okay? Um, next up is Plague Doctor. That is only for Favorite of Nurgle. Again, that is again for the Nurgle team. That is that. Uh, Riotous Rookies is the next one for 100k. Um, available to teams for low cost linemen. So actually, I don't really know what that means. So <laughs> um, let me look this one up. So this applies to Ogres and I believe Halflings? I don't. I think it's just Ogres. Um, I can check real quick. Yeah, just ogres. This applies to ogres. Um, so this is for you, Nick. Head of the game, the head coach, uh, ventures outside the stadium, armed with handfuls of small change and dried beans, which they fling to the adoring crowd, telling them they have been hired, and this game is their big break in Blood Bowl. Regardless of how many players are available for this game, and in addition to any journeymen available for this game, or the team gains for free make up any lack of players your team gains an additional 2d3 plus one journeyman for this game these fresh-faced young hopefuls may take this game or the number of players in your team draft is list temporarily above 16 they are normal journeyman players in every other respect and unless hired in the post game sequence they will be sent off their merry way once the game has ended so basically, you get two, three, three, plus one journeyman. You're you're always getting two journeymen out of this, at least, or I guess three, three journeymen out of this, um, for free. And if let's say your ogre team just ran out of ogre or goblins, and you got your five goblins for free, now you can have three extra goblins plus potentially more. That's really good, because um, you know your goblins are gonna die. You know you need some extra ones. So this could really help you out with $100,000 uh, for some extra rookies. Um, Halfling Master Chef, you're gonna see this one a lot if people have the money for it, um, especially if you're going against Halflings. Halfling Master Chef uh, costs 300,000 gold pieces. It's very expensive. Um, and it only costs 100,000 gold pieces for Halfling Dumble Cup Special Rule, which is the Halfling team. 
Um, the reason why it costs so much is because it's super good. At the start of both the first and the second half, after step two, but before step three of the start drive sequence, we'll get to the start drive sequence eventually, um, roll 3d6. For each roll of a four up, your team is so inspired they gain an extra team reroll for this half. In addition, the opposing team is so distracted that for each roll of four up, they will lose one of their team rerolls for this half. So basically, on a four up, you're stealing another person's rerolls. That is insane. You get to steal their team reroll for the like for the half for eight turns. That's oh, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, you you use those team rerolls, you steal them, um, and they're yours now. They're yours, all right. And then you reset back to um, after the half, and you roll those three uh, d6 to get them again. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, halflings are constantly going to use this inducement. They're constantly going to be stealing your rerolls, and that's the special thing about halflings. They're going to have all the rerolls in the world. And you're going to be stuck with whatever you got. Uh, so halflings, really good, really good with the halfling master chef. Next up, unlimited mercenary players price varies. Um, that basically is covered in the uh, death zone book. Um, if you want to have mercenary, it's not really common that you'll have um, the mercenary things, but it's basically uh, your positionals plus loner. Uh, so that means blitzers plus loner, um, your catcher price plus loner. Um, that's all that is basically uh, zero to two star players Bryce varies so um, if you wanted to get two star players or a one star player for your uh, game it can really be beneficial there's a lot of star players in this book I'm not gonna cover them in a video this uh, anytime this soon in this week but maybe next week I'll go over all those um, in book star players that um, Justin or halfling player can probably afford uh, next up, uh, two inf infamous coaching staff. Again, that is covered in the Death Zone book. If you want to learn more about that, get the Death Zone book. Uh, wizard price varies. Wizard depends. Uh, you can see wizard quite often as well. Um, the price varies basically on which spell you're getting. Um, but may most, most likely, they'll be getting 150 gold pieces for this inducement for the Hireling Sports Wizard, uh, Fireball, and Zap. Um, you get one of these. You get to choose one of these. Um, fireball is really good. On a four up, the player has been hit by a fireball. On a f roll of one to three, the player manages to avoid the fireball. Four up, you're knocking someone down with a fireball. Really good. Just follow the rules here. Um, zap. You may um, cast this player either the start of any opponent's team turn before any player is activated. Immediately after the opposing team turn is ended, target any opponent's player and roll on a d6. So we're equal to their strength. So if they have a uh, low strength team, you can zap one of their players with the ball, uh, basically knock them out. Um, pretty, pretty good. Um, and they turn into a frock, which is hilarious. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's the wizard. Um, again, just read the rules for that. And the biased referee, that is also in the depths of uh, rules. And it has some actual rules here. Um, bias referee, there's actually, actually, I'm sorry, uh, bias referees on page 95. Um, you can have this so that way the uh, your fouls are getting better. Um, however, you might as well just take a bribe and be safer with than just a biased referee. Um, that's just my opinion. Again, bribes are, I think, a lot better than using um, a biased referee. Um, it's just you can have more and you're more likely to not get sent off the field. Um, so you won't see bias referees that much. All right, and that will that's it. basically it for inducements, uh, the common inducements that you'll find in this Blood Bowl uh, core rulebook. Again, uh, comes with the starter set. Very, very useful if you're playing Blood Bowl. Um, I'd say each player should probably have one on hand when you're like doing a game um, just to make sure you guys are all up to date on the rules. Um, so yeah, that's all the inducements. If you have questions about inducements or any, um, you know, uh, wondering what you should take for inducements, please leave it in the comments. I'd love to help you guys out. Um, and even give me some suggestions on what inducements I should take for um, some of my games or some of the other league games, um, especially for halflings. Justin would love to learn more about inducements. He needs to because he gets a lot of petty cash for being halflings. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, that'll do it for us. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one where we go over uh, kickoff and the uh, start of the drive sequence. So, see you guys later.